Hi boys and girls, welcome to Everyday Math Lesson 10.6, Part 1, Making Change. The materials that you'll need, notebook paper, pencil, and math journal. The first thing we're going to do is go over math journal page 244 from Lesson 10.5. If you're noticing any that you had wrong, please fix any of your mistakes with your pencil and eraser. So for question one, show $1.73 in two different ways using pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. And there's lots of different answers that you could have had for this. I'm just going to show you two examples. So I showed $1 using four quarters, and then 50 cents using two quarters, 60, 70, 71, 72, 73. Another way, I, again, I used four quarters for my $1. I used a quarter, so I'm at 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 70, 71, 72, 73. And again, you maybe had completely different ways. Just double check and make sure again that it's showing $1.73. For question two, draw a picture of 10 children. And so what I did is I divided my array up. I divided it first in half, so half of 10 is 5. 3 tenths is the same as 3, and 1 fifth of 10 is 2. For question number 3, fill in the rule and the missing numbers. So looking at these first combinations, I can see that the rule is to add 1,000. So then when given the number 4,650, adding 1,000 would get me 5,650. If I have 6,700, I need to do the opposite. I needed to subtract to get 5,700. And then I got to choose for the last one. I chose to put in 7,300, and so then out would be my 8,300. And again, you probably have a completely different answer for the last one, but just double check and make sure it still follows that same rule of plus 1,000. For question number four, 6 plus 5 is 11, so 60 plus 50, I'm just adding one zero to my answer, giving me 110. 600 plus 500, I'm adding two zeros, giving me 1,100. 6,000 plus 5,000, I'm adding three zeros, giving me 11,000. For questions number for question number five, I mentioned using the little um, resource on page 310. So I know that one quart is greater than one pint. I know that three cups is less than one gallon. One quart is equal to four cups, and one gallon is greater than five pints. For question number six, there are six drink boxes per pack. How many packs are needed to serve 25 second graders and two teachers? One drink box each. Draw an array and circle the best answer. So first I needed to know that I'm looking at 25 plus two, which is 27. And if there's three per pack, I'm kind of thinking of 3 times what equals 27, or 27 divided by 3. And I know that 3 times 9 is equal to 27, so 9 packs are needed. Again, please double check, make sure you have this page correct, and fix any of the mistakes um, with your pencil and eraser. You can put your math or journal to the side, and we'll use our notebook paper and whiteboard and marker available um, to write down our answers from the next if the speed is too fast, please pause as often as needed. For each problem, estimate to the nearest 10 cents and add the two estimates together, taking a look at the example. 49 cents would round to 50 cents, 99 cents would round to a dollar, giving me a total of $1.50. What I would like you to do is pause the video to solve the problems and then press play to hear the answers. 59 cents plus 39 cents, I would round that to 60 cents plus 40 cents, which equals a dollar. 72 cents plus 42 cents, I would round that to 70 cents plus 40 cents equals one dollar and ten cents. 78 cents plus 63 cents, I would round that to 80 cents plus 60 cents equals one dollar and forty cents. One dollar and ninety-nine cents plus one dollar and forty one plus four dollars and fifty nine cents I would round that to two dollars plus four dollars and sixty cents equals six dollars and sixty cents. 
$3.42 plus $2.29, I would round that to $3.40 plus $2.30, which equals $5.70. For the next problems, we're writing our answer in dollar and cent notation. Remember in dollar and cent notation, we need the dollar symbol, and we also need that decimal point. So 29 cents would look like decimal point or zero, decimal point two nine. And again, make sure you have that dollar symbol in front. What would 59 cents look like? 59 cents. And please pause as often as needed. Nine cents would look like this. A dollar 47 or one dollar and 47 cents would look like this. Ten dollars and two cents would look like this. Nine hundred thirty-three dollars and thirty cents. I'll say that one one more time. Nine hundred thirty-three dollars and thirty cents would look like this. One more. Try this. $3,546.16. I'll say that one one more time. $3,546.16 would look like this. For our next problems, we're going to be making change by counting up. For this first problem, you might want to hear um, my explanation just to kind of see how we're doing this. And then for future problems, pause to try to solve on your own. So I bought a banana for 59 cents and I gave the cashier $1. I want to know how much change would I get back. And I'm going to record my change in my notebook. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to show you how I do that right below. We're going to try to use the fewest amount of coins. So if I'm starting at 59 cents and I need to end at $1, I'm going to count up. And I show this in two different ways. You could show it by maybe just doing the coins if that's helpful, or if it's helpful to do the numbers too, that's great as well. So if I'm at 59 cents plus one would get me to 60, plus 10 would get me to 70, plus five would get me to 75. I know if I'm at 75 cents and I had a quarter, then I get to a dollar. So I would get 41 cents back. And the fewest coins that I would get would be one penny, one dime, one nickel, and one quarter. I want you to try this for our next one. This time, I bought saltines for 72 cents. I gave the cashier $1. How much change would I get back? So again, I'm starting at 72 cents, and I need to end at a dollar. Can you record the coins that you would get back? And then press play to hear the answer. If I was at 72 cents and I added up three pennies, so 73, 74, 75, I'm at 75 again. I know if I add a quarter, then I would get up to a dollar, giving me change of 28 cents. I bought an apple for 43 cents. I gave the cashier a dollar. How much change would I get back? Please press pause. Record your change and then hit play. So if I'm at 43 and I add two pennies, so 43, 44, 45, a nickel would get me to 50. Since I'm at 50 cents, I know if I add two more quarters, I would get up to a dollar, giving me my change of 57 cents. We'll try one more today. This time I bought peanut butter for $1.29 and I gave the cashier $2. How much change would I get back? Notice how I'm starting at $1.29 and I'm ending at $2. Write down the coins that you would need in order to get there. If I'm at $1.29, and, and I add one penny, 
I would get to $1.30. And then a dime, I would get to $1.40. $1.50, since I'm at $1.50, I know a quarter would get me to $1.75, and another quarter would get me to $2. Adding these two quarters, two dimes, and a penny all together, it would be change of 71 cents. If you need more practice, you could try making up some more problems similar to this. Otherwise, this is just part one. Tomorrow, we'll have a very similar lesson, which will be part two for more practice with counting up change. You'll notice that today, there's only one math journal page, and we're just going to be doing our math box page 245. Tomorrow, we'll do some of the math journal pages that go along with this lesson. So looking at page 245, math box is from lesson 10.6. For question number one, what number is shown by the following blocks? For question number two, Joe has $1 and spends 65 cents. How much change will he get? If you want to write down how many coins or which co combination of coins, that might be helpful. And then you can add the coins together to write your answer on the line. Question number three, what is the temperature? And is that a warm or cold temperature? For question number five, you buy some stickers for $1.89. Show two ways to pay for them. Question number five, write the name of three objects that are shaped like cylinders. There's going to be a lot of possible answers for question number five. Question number six, how many stars? And then fill in the multiplication diagram to go along with the amount of stars. Boys and girls, I'm going to ask that you complete this journal page on your own. When you are done, take a picture and seesaw that picture to your teacher, and we will go over this page in our next video. Thank you.